Hey, everybody. Keith here with the K from Gen X coming up on the show. Tragedy Strikes the Air Show. Also, the Jeff Saturday hiring for the Indianapolis Colts. Much controversy and the voice of Batman. Silence. We will remember. Here we go. This is an It Came From Gen X video. All right, everybody, welcome to It Came From Gen X. It's about that time again. Yeah, there he is, my man Fish, scaring the crap out of the kids. <laughs> All right, this is our little show about life through the eyes of Gen Xers. We are three best friends of 30 years plus. Uh, started off as a football show a few years ago, and now here we are streaming live on the Boss Code Media Network. Also, Facebook, YouTube, other social media streams. Uh, don't forget to check our podcast out on Spotify, but this is going to give you all the details on that in a minute. But first, we got to say hi to my man, Michael Skinner, a.k.a. Skinbone. What's up, brother? Hey, how's everybody doing tonight? Oh, you are uh, got the purple rain going tonight, man. I do it. got purple rain tonight. Uh, busy at the Skinner First and Household. We thought we were going to have a child born tonight, but uh, last-minute cancellation with the doctors, so we'll try again on Thursday. Everybody's yeah. back to healthy again, and uh, I just found out I'm headed to Florida on Friday for a quick turnaround. So uh, One word Skinner. That's what the that's what, Never the needs. Here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we all need one more skinner no just kidding right yeah, that, that's great i i look forward to uh uh you telling us that you are a new grandpapa and uh you give us our best my man fish brian fisher aka the fish what's going on brother how are you man i thought the, the falls voted down the skinner levy it, it was a tie, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so the the federal government stepped in and said that they could keep reproducing until mm. 2024, so they're trying to get it all in now. Okay. That's, I, that's a purple ranger. I thought Skinner was dressed as a, a Veruca Salt. <laughs> I don't know if you know that <laughs> reference. Yeah, yeah. It's out there. Yeah, it's, I did yeah. go old school with the Akron arrows, by the way, too, on the hat. Uh -huh. You really can't yeah. tell here, but they're now the Akron rubber ducks. But and, I got the and Akron Fish arrows. is rocking the wasp. I know he went to the show the other night. Yes. Uh, I saw the live streams. I can't believe how good they sounded. It was a good show. So wasp, the 40th anniversary concert. It uh, took Coach Cooper out That's there. Crazy. He and I have been fans for many years, so his birthday is coming up. So. Mm -hmm. Got tickets for him and Amy. Went up there, had a great time. At the Cleveland Agora, it was a nice venue. They, they did, did a lot of remodeling up there, so I give a shout-out to them. It was very clean. Been there a long time. Yeah, very clean and organized. They did a nice job there, so kudos to the ownership and staff at the Cleveland Agora. And Wasp, it's not an Armored Saint open form, uh, two 80s metal band. Armored yeah, Saint I thought good. those guys were dead. No, and uh, Wasp was great. And there's rumors that maybe there was some voice tracks from Blackie Lawless, the singer. I don't know, but uh, you know they what? Still, they I would great believe that whatever. because those harmonies sounded too good to me. It was I good. think there probably were some voice tracks, you know. And if I don't were, think a guy could sing like he could sing and still sound like that at this. No, I, I'm with you. you guys, 66 yeah. years of it, but yeah, still, no. it sounded great. The yeah. band, it was just great time. So yeah, I, awesome it, show. I, I'm glad you said it, it doesn't matter. It's, it's not a penalty. No. You put on a good show, you put on a good show. You know, yep. I, I don't know why these people want to, uh, you know, crucify everybody for that. In a situation like Blackie at that age, or anybody, I could understand that. You know, you're going to perform a good show, perform a good show. Um, you know, as an artist, I would prefer to hear you naturally, uh, but, hey, it's all good. Okay, cool then. Um, I don't even remember what my weekend was. Oh, you know what? I, I laid very, very low. Um, of course, Friday I went and saw uh, Black Panther. 
uh, with mm-hmm. my two sisters. We went out to dinner and went and saw the movie. Um, I saw it at the uh, Cinemark Taco Falls XD, the big white water wall screen. And nice. uh, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. Um, just absolutely loved it. Hopefully, maybe we have time to talk about that later. Sure. And uh, Saturday, I lay low. Sunday, I was the guest speaker at a local church. Um, they called me last week and wanted me to come be their guest speaker, and it was just a phenomenal experience. So, um, and if anybody wants to see that, it's on my Facebook page. But uh, other than that, let's rock and roll, man. We got a lot to talk about. Fish, tell them where they can find the show. All right. So you mentioned a couple of things already, Keith, but uh, we you might be listening to us on demand on your favorite podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Verbal, iHeart, Radio, Amazon Music, and more. You can also ask your home assistance device to play the It Came From Gen X podcast. Uh, just pull us up and uh, give us a follow or subscribe wherever you listen. As we publish new episodes every week, they'll pop in your feed free of charge uh you might be watching us on our youtube channel it came from gen x at it came from gen x uh or the boss code media tv network we have segments out there as well you can find them on your uh smart tv or your mobile device just pull out the boss code media app download give us a subscribe there and we are on there on our very own channel along with other creative folks across the country uh all show information can be found in two main places our link tree page just simply google link tree it came from gen x it's simply a page with links to our social media and where you can listen to us and our website it came from gen x dot wordpress dot com all show information is there ways to help the show links to new episodes videos bios all that good stuff is there if there's anything you do uh simply like share follow subscribe to our page to our podcast tell a friend and uh, we appreciate your support out there thank you All right, thanks a lot, Fish. And hey, uh, you know, he mentioned Boss Code Media Network, so we want to send out much love to Des, the reason uh, talented music artist and soon to be media mogul. So big love to him. And also, this podcast has been produced for quite some time now by the son of our own Mike Skinner, Mike Skinner Jr., uh, mm-hmm. just an uh, ultra talented young man. Uh, who will be getting married soon next month. So we're all excited yes, about that. And our video being is produced by our own Brian Fisher. Um, excellent job with that. So let's get this crack in. What you got for us, Fish? How about some world news? All right, Fish, you got the world news there? Or you want me to go ahead and handle that? Why don't you go ahead and handle that one, Skinner? I'll do the pop right. culture there. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to start off on a little bit of a, a bad, not a bad subject, but a sad subject. I'm taking you guys to Dallas, Texas. They had an air show uh, at the Dallas Executive Airport this past weekend. <clears throat> Vintage World War II and World War mm. uh, One military aircraft were <clears throat> on. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, they were they were the guests at this air show. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, there was a midair collision right there in front of everyone Oof. at the air show. The P-63, which is a single pilot fighter jet from the nineteen, I think the nineteen forties, was banking to come into formation behind the P-63 bar or the. I'm sorry, the uh, B-17 uh, Flying Fortress. Mm. And unfortunately, it was banking to the left and coming around. So if you know anything about aircraft, when you're banking and coming around, the belly of your aircraft blocks your vision coming around from the left. 
unfortunately, he was up above and banking and was not able to see the um, the B-17 bomber and collided right there in midair. Mm. All five people on board of the bomber and the single pilot uh, P-63 uh, perished, unfortunately. Um, if you're into those kind of videos, it, it's all over social media. It's all over CNN. Um, the reason I'm bringing it up is I've, you know, you guys all know that I'm a military veteran. We, when I see stuff like this, it brings back a bad memory to me. And, and I, again, I don't want to bring down the show, but I want to at least make light of, you know, how serious all this is. We yeah. had a midair collision for two of our aircraft from McCord mm. Air Force Base uh, back in 1994. And we lost 13 airmen. Uh, oh six six in one aircraft, seven in the other, uh, to a midair collision. And wow. um, it, there's no feeling in the world, even if you don't know the people, because you don't know everybody. McCord was a pretty big base. So I, I right. knew most of the pilots. I knew most of the air crew because I was a co- considered a crew chief. So I was jack of all trades, master of none. But I was the one responsible for the jet's overall maintenance. So when I go to air shows and I've done, I've worked a lot of air shows as a mechanic as well. We did every year. I always had fun going to the Boeing because Boeing is out there in Seattle, Mm. just out the saddle, Boeing airfield. And we would do a a huge air show every year. And that was always a thrill to see all the different aircraft uh, coming through. But my heart's go out to the families to the people that witnessed the crash, to all those involved in this. I mean, it's just absolutely horrendous. And it, again, it just brings back a bad, sad time in my life when I was in the military losing these uh, 13 airmen. So I can only imagine what these families going through. So for me to bring this up, it's more to, you know, say prayers to the f- friends and family and to the everyone involved in this. Um, our hearts do go out to you. Have you guys witnessed anything like this ever? Have you been a part of, would you guys go to air shows? Is it something you enjoy, something you just haven't done or can do? Because I know Cleveland does a pretty good air show every year, but it's always hit or miss when it comes to weather, whether it comes to politics. Over the last couple of years, it's really been a ice, it's been a sore yeah. subject, rather. Keith? Um. First and foremost, uh, our condolences and prayers to the family of everybody that was lost, it, everybody just affected by it. It's a horrific thing. Um, what I know about, you know, piloting an airplane or whatever, couldn't fill a thimble. But, yeah, I've been to air shows. I um, love it. I'm mad at myself that I haven't been to one in a while because it was a a super thrill for me. Um, The one thing that I took from it when I went was that I would have never been a pilot or an airman because I couldn't fit in any of the planes, but that's another story. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) It was terrible, man. I was like, I wouldn't have been a gunman or anything, man. Um, The only thing I can say about this subject, I know we live in a voyeuristic society, I know social media is like full throttle ahead, but I really hate that that's on the internet. I I, I understand. When, yeah. When I watch that video, I just, my heart just like, Ooh. that's out there for everybody associated with these, 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 these pilots to see, you know, kids, grandkids, everybody. That's that's out there. Somebody's going to show it here and there throughout the rest of their life, bring it up, catch them off guard. I mean, that's... I, I don't know. There, I, there's nothing you can do about it. I get it. But I really wish that wasn't on the internet. That's the only thing I took from that when I saw it. That's just a very, very sad, horrific thing. The other thing I just want to say is I don't know how something like this can happen. This should never be able to happen. It- Freak accident. It's the only way it can be absolute freak accident. They don't happen well, often, I, but when they do happen, it's it's one too many. I get it. I, somebody needs to come up with a really good explanation of why it happened because 
you would think something like this, first of all, the, the practicing has to be rigorous. Oh, sure. First of all, the, the people who do this, I am sure they are seasoned pilots, you know, maybe retired or whatever, who've flown planes countless hours. They got well, countless hours know, in the cockpit. The pilot of the B-17 had 30 years experience. So you, you're, 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 you're Air Force guy. How could mm -hmm. this, think about this, how could this possibly happen with the hours of practice? You know, knowing the distances that you have to be, knowing uh, all these different things that I'm sure come into it that I can't even think of. How could this happen, Skinner? You know, it's that thing that, that's called human error. There's no way of getting around it. No matter how much experience, how much practice, how much human, ex I mean, it's human error. I mean, look at, uh, let's go back to Kobe Bryant, uh, what, two, three years ago? Um, the pilot of his uh, uh, helicopter had 25 years experience. And it, it, again, one time is too many, but it happens, unfortunately. I don't, I, I don't, I wish I had a better answer for you. I other know. Than hu and I, human and I didn't error. expect you to give me one. I just wanted to. to yeah, but thought. human error I, is something that is unavoidable, unfortunately. All right. Bish, you have any comments? I mean, I can't say any more as far as the, the, you know, speaking to the tragedy itself than you guys did. It's a horrible thing. And with you, Keith, that just having it out there immortalized online is just a different thing these days. You have to contend with that's unfortunate, too. I don't know. On the other side of it, it's like you, you got all these old planes flying. It's like, why take any chance at all to be in the remotely close to one another so it's interesting like that and i i don't know so that's what i'm saying fish yeah i don't know i, I just don't, I don't get know. it man yeah. i mean if we were young pilots or something i can maybe see so i don't know you yeah. know guys yeah. i was talking about how i hate to see that's on the, on the internet now i'm guilty i sent you guys a video on a few or maybe in a picture i don't know if you guys saw it uh and I forget what country it was, but one of them in huge snakes swallowed somebody's grandmother. Yeah, I remember that. I was talking to one of my students today about it. 14 years old, and he hit me with the simplest logic. Why was somebody taking a picture instead of helping her? That's a great wow. question. Mic drop. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so I want to go to Centennial, Colorado. Let me make sure that's right. Yep, Centennial, Colorado. Every week, a group of teens from Cherry Creek High School come together, and they go to the Holy Creek Retirement Community. You ask, maybe why? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, these, these why? kids, <laughs> why? Yeah, right. Yeah, oh, I got to go to grandma's house, or oh, the old people, this and baby boomers, you know, all those phrases that these kids nowadays call us old folks. You kids? Yeah, right. What these teens are is they're actually very, you know, you know it as well as anybody. If you have a problem with your phone or your computer, give it to your five year old nephew, give it to your, you know, seven year old kid. They'll figure it out, especially on these damn phones. Um, but these kids go to the retirement community once a week or maybe twice a month to help out the uh, older folk stay in contact with their families. They help them with Facebook. They help them with questions on uh, FaceTime. If they have printer issues, they help them with printing. If there's computer wow. problems, they'll go and set up. Uh, they'll tear down a computer and set it all back up for them and get it back up and running. And I just, I saw this and I'm like, I had to bring it up because yeah. it's such a heartwarming mm -hmm. story. Um, the volunteers are from a group, Generation Technology. It's a nonprofit created by students about three years ago. So it's actually a nonprofit mm -hmm. that these kids started three or four years ago. Communication through email or Facebook so that people can stay in touch with their relatives. Printers mm -hmm. are a big issue. 
and anything you can think of from easy problems like plugging something in to more complicated stuff where it takes us like an hour and a half to get get them back up and running. So, do they do podcast uh, audio setup? Yeah, right. We should probably send them to, to Key's house. I know. <laughs> but Wait a minute. Was, <laughs> but kudos to these kids. It's a great thing. I hope they continue it. And you know, these older folks, you know, got, and I'm I'm referring to people that are 15, 20 years older than us. We're we're in our young fifties. And I don't know everything. Michael's always yelling at me, Dad, you're smarter than this. You could, you should be able to do this and this, that, and other. But he knows I'm going to call him anyway because he's going to help Junior, you have whippersnapper? That's, that's what kids do. <laughs> They're supposed to help their parents. Exactly. But these kids helping these, these uh, people to stay in touch with their families, there's nothing better out there right now uh, that feel good for me than to read this story. So I wanted to bring this up to you guys and bring it up to our audience. So glad you did. Help help your older folks with maybe a pain in the butt having to go over and fix something or do something, but it means the world to them and it means the world to their families when they're able to stay in communication. And it's going to mean the world to 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 you as young people. I'm telling you, absolutely. Listen, I'm so glad you brought that story up. I see a cross section of young people in this country that have no moral fortitude. And huh. part of part of the reason is they've missed out on moments like this. A lot of school districts have cut out or don't do things like this. The reason why I'm so glad she brought this story up, I will never forget in the seventh grade, we all went to the same junior high. And uh, perhaps you all remember Miss Bunny Penny, uh, mm-hmm. my home ec teacher. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes, she is. One Christmas, she took our home at class, uh, seven o'clock in the evening, to a retirement home in Barberton. Hmm. And we went there to make Christmas decorations hmm. with the uh, with the elderly there. I that was my first experience with anything like that, being in a place like that. Didn't know what to think. I will never forget the look on some of their faces, uh, the joy, the desperation to have company, to have someone to do something with besides sit there and look at each other all day. It was it was like they were just uh, inhaling us, and the short time we were there, made an impact on my life and i never forgot that i never forgot what giving a little of your time to somebody can give i found out at that age the best gift you could ever give someone is your time and a piece of mm-hmm. yourself that's when i yep. learned that lesson so to hear about them kids doing that yeah it's something great for 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 the, the 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 elderly there, but you know what? It's great for those kids, and I hope most of them, if not all of them, will leave with something that they didn't know about before they got there that will stick with them the rest of their life and help form their life as far as how we treat people. Going to see my dad at the nursing home for the first time was the saddest thing I ever saw. People would they would chase me to the elevator in their wheelchairs when I would go check my dad out to take him to dinner or whatever. Take me with you. They had nobody to come see him. We used to hear about, uh, this is so-and-so. Her kids don't come see her. She has no friends or whatever. Then that's sad, man. It's yeah. sad to not have anyone. So I think that's a great story. And I hope those kids get more out of it even than those uh, elderly people did. Well said, man. Can't any more than that, man. That's uh, very well said. All right. All right. So let's move on then to some uh, music and sports. I like sports and music. That kind of flows better. What do you think? Music and sports. Sports and music. Okay. We'll go with that. A little bit. All All right. right. Sports and music. Okay, guys. Take it away. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So, uh, you know, one of the things that are on my on, on uh, my mind this week, uh, 
First of all, I'll just talk about uh, Sunday's football games, or if you're watching the show now, last week's football games. Uh, I hope everybody caught the uh, Viking uh, Bills game, if you're a football fan. I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. Uh, I hope you saw the game, because I saw the highlights, too. And the highlights just don't get it. You had to be watching the game, into the game, to get go through all the emotions. Of course, I had no no dog in that race. I could care who won. But I could just see how, you know, Minnesota, oh, we just blew this whole game. And then, you know, if they get a chance with a couple minutes left, get down to the goal line. Touchdown. No penalty. Boom, boom, boom. You have to take another shot. You go for it on fourth. You don't get it on the goal line. The frustration, Kirk Cousins throwing his helmet, game over with. And then, of course, all Buffalo has to do is search for it, and the clock runs out, and they bobble the snap, touchdown. Unbelievable. Minnesota wins the game. Only a few seconds left. Well, no problem. The Bills go right up the field. <laughs> they mm-hmm. kick a field goal and tie it. And then it goes into overtime. So just an amazing game if you didn't catch it. At least go find the highlights. So did you catch that game, Musketer? Oh, yeah, I absolutely did. I got so fed up with the Browns game that I turned it off, and I watched specifically watch oh, yeah. the, Bill, the Bills notice Minnesota I didn't bring game. Uh, you yeah, noticed I, know, I didn't bring up the Browns yeah. or the Cowboys. That was real nice. The Browns yeah. had two weeks to prepare for Miami, and that's how they showed up. So, But, no, back to the Minnesota uh, Minnesota Bills game. I was talking – my dad kept texting me, especially on that last drive of Buffalo. He's like, how in the hell – are those sidelines completely open? Unbelievable. That one Minnesota receiver or DB was guarding those lines to keep those uh, wide receivers in bounds. Skinner, the entire I, I trip these down guys the field. Conspiracy nuts over the years, but I am starting to lean to listen to people who talk about the NFL being fixed. I've been you know, seeing a lot of stuff, man. I'm starting to wonder some stuff. It might not be all of it, but some stuff might be fixed. It was amazing. They could have that game didn't have to go into overtime. All they had to do is protect the sidelines. But yeah. maybe that's it doesn't maybe that's make just sense. old school. And, and, and why would anybody, after all the years and all the science, keep running prevent defense? It doesn't you make prevent any to sense. Prevent to win is what it's called. Because the Buffalo Bills didn't have to wasn't fighting against the Vikings in the last thirty seconds. They were fighting against the clock. So play the sure. same defense you've been playing. Why give them space? To do what they need to do. It makes me wonder, man. Um, and the other thing is, too, I watched this video and I was talking about the, the uh, NFL being fixed, and it showed me more than just a game or two. It showed a pattern going all the way back to the 90s, all the way back to the, the turkey game with the Pittsburgh Steelers in Detroit, and the referee tells Jerome Bettis, heads or tails? And he clearly says tails, and he goes, all right, you call heads. And everybody, including the Detroit Lions, goes, he said tails. Everybody in the stand heard him. But he goes, no, it's called heads. Just walk off. And, like, nobody did a thing about that. So, anyway, I don't know, man. I watched that. Like, how can Buffalo go up the field in 30 seconds, untouched, unscathed, to kick a field goal? Makes you wonder. Well, they oh, had a chance for a touchdown even. Yeah, really did. So, can you remember a game uh, that sticks out in your mind that might have been as wild as that one? There was a – I think it was – I want to say it was Tennessee. Sorry, I, I, I just won't pop them right. It, that's all right. Go ahead, Fish. That's yeah, right. So ahead, it, was, it was the whatever in – it was a kickoff, and the only way Tennessee could win the game was to run the kickoff back. I remember the guy got it, and he lateraled the ball straight The Music City the, Miracle. That's it. That's right. That's the it. Music City Miracle. Yeah, the guy the ran, ran, ran all the way in for a touchdown, game over. That was one of the most wildest – that Endings. was amazing. Uh, yeah, that was see. that yeah. was great. Yeah, good one. I re- I remember seeing that. I think I watched that live. It was just unbelievable. Uh, you know that play doesn't work too often, but they worked it to perfection. Man, I never forget that. How about you, Skinner? Oh, I go back to the one f- one Super Bowl where I can't remember who it was. Patriots were playing. And Tom Brady was intercepted in the end zone with uh, the clock running out. Um, can't remember gosh, what I, that was. I, you know which one I'm talking about, though. That, um, but it was a crazy game back and forth, and Tom Brady was driving down the field to uh, yeah for a game winning touchdown. They were on the two yard line. They threw a pass, and the j- rookie jumped the route and intercepted the game. Oh gosh, yes, uh, Seattle. Yes, 
That uh, was Seattle. Yeah, Seattle. You're right. Seattle, at, yeah. In New York. Well, it was Brady don't, the Brady don't run that. It was uh, Russell but, Wilson oh, doing yeah. it instead of letting uh, Marshawn oh, Lynch run it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, um, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Butler, one. Yeah. Butler intercepted. Yeah. That was crazy, yeah, man. Crazy. All you had to do was hand it off to Beast Mode and you get two yeah. Super Bowl rings. So that was crazy. Yeah, what? What a bad call. That well, was the worst the call in history, maybe. <laughs> worst yeah. call in history, man. He'll never live that one down. No, no, no. McCarthy's got the worst call in history after this weekend. Sorry, Fish. I got to bring yeah, it yeah, up. Yeah, but it didn't cost him a Super Bowl. <laughs> history, it didn't cost him yeah, a Super Bowl, though. So. No, <laughs> no uh, it didn't. I, uh, but... uh, you know, I got a few that sticks in my head. Of course, Skinner, you know, in post, you brought up the uh, – uh, not in post, but in pre-show, uh, you brought up the uh, Buffalo-Kansas City game last year. It was extraordinary. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember the uh, uh, S- Saints game years ago when they made the most incredible comeback with basically no time left. And all I had to do was kick the extra point and missed it. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> and, uh, that, was, that was something to watch. Um, and, of course, what many call the greatest Super Bowl of all time, uh, the Steelers and the Cardinals. That was just an amazing. Oh, that was in what two thousand seven? Yeah, that was an amazing fourth yeah. quarter. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Larry Fitzgerald was incredible, uh, and of course, to me, I think the greatest pass, uh, at least top two, three ever thrown in the Super Bowl, and greatest catch. That was just for Roethlisberger to throw that at an angle to the corner over two defenders and him to make well, I that thought catch. you were talking about Tebow when he threw the 82-yard pass. No, I wasn't. No, 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 I wasn't talking about that. Don't get smacked, <laughs> all right? I'm trying to be nice to you. I'm trying to be nice to you. <laughs> Don't make me reach through the screen. So, uh, yeah, but uh, and, you know, it was, it's was been some great ones. Um, but that was wild. So, anyway, uh, of course, the big thing that's going on in, in, in sports, staying in the NFL, is the Indianapolis Colts hiring of Jeff Saturday as interim head football coach. This has caused a crap storm, if you will, um, all the NFL shows in the media. And I, I just want to clarify something about this whole thing. Uh, I saw a meme and just thousands of comments after the meme. The meme was Jeff Saturday on the podium after the Colts won Sunday, his first game. And I was just appalled by all the, the, the comments. The comments were like, way to, way to get that win Saturday and shut up all these haters. Oh, maybe it'll take somebody new like Jeff Saturday to turn this franchise around. Oh, I'll give the guy a freaking chance to shut up all this crap and all this. It was just unbelievable. And so I want to be first one to say this. I, I am completely disgusted by this hiring. And just to make it clear, I have always liked Jeff Saturday. I thought he was a absolute phenomenal football player. And though I don't know him personally, Years of watching him as an analyst, I he just seems like a just awesome guy. I love how straightforward he is. He always tells it like it is. He doesn't pull any punches. He just seems like somebody that I would like. And I hope Jeff Saturday succeeds. I want to make that very clear. He has the job now, so I hope he succeeds. It's not about haters. It's not about Jeff Saturday. It has nothing to do with Jeff Saturday or why people are upset. It's about this simple fact right here. The Rooney rule has become a joke in the NFL. It has wasted the valuable time of minority coordinators and would-be head coaches knowing that they're not going to get the job no matter what their qualifications. You got guys like Eric Bieniemy who has run the top offense in the league for the last maybe five years for the Kansas City Chiefs. You have Byron Leftwich. Oh, and he's a Super Bowl winner. And you have Byron Leftwich, another Super Bowl winner, running a top offense for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the list goes on and on. You have all these guys with the best qualifications. Super Bowl, don't get no better than that. Offense, top, top five. And when they don't get even an opportunity for a head coaching job, the same 
excuse is given. They don't have enough experience. Then you see them hire Jeff Saturday, whose qualifications, he coached a high school football team for a little while. That's what's wrong. And it's like it's a slap in the face, and you basically just just played your hand. Well, we, you know, I don't want to say every uh, uh, GM or owner, but certainly a person like uh, Jim Ursay, who uh, has given the same excuse over the years. Did you hire? Did you even interview any minorities? What about this person? What did that person? Well, they didn't have enough experience. He's gone through how many coaches in the last six years? So that's what everybody's upset about. It's just like the same thing when when um, when we see uh, an African American or a black person is is killed uh, by the police, and the first thing you see uh, people do on the on the in media is put their record up there, or they shouldn't have been committing crimes and this, that, and whatever. It's not about that. It's about being afforded the same rights as your white counterparts. You know, you got a, a, a guy who might have been a criminal, but we got a guy who was killed by the police for selling cigarettes. But yet you got a white guy who murdered a bunch of people and he was taken in without a scratch and they stopped that freaking McDonald's or wherever and bought him a hamburger. That's the problem. So this Ursa thing is kind of a slap in the face. I hope he has success. It has nothing to do with him. But they got to stop coming up with these lame excuses. And I want to know what you guys think the solution to be to get more minority opportunities in head coaching and your thoughts on the Ursa hires. Fish, start with you. I, mm, I, if I know that's Colts, a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, no, I know. If I, 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 I get if I'm the Colts owner, the, wanting to try to bring it it's my franchise has not been relevant in several years since mm-hmm. who's that starting quarterback to get hurt who was the guy uh for the colts the, yeah well uh the well, they Col- got uh, matt ryan now no no this is years ago the star quarterback they had that got hurt retired oh uh that was uh um command right there on the tip of my tongue Stanford. um no 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 Took over, uh, yeah, he played at Stanford. Yes. Okay. He you took, know what I'm talking he about. He took though, over so for it. Peyton Manning. Um. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank too. That's right. We'll look. We'll look it up here. But uh, to 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 try to hire somebody outside the norm, I get the temptation to do that because it's like a nothing is working. People around it, it's it, it it's been in in you know that it, it's not working for me. And you just try something completely different. You hire an ex player. Right. Your franchise. Andrew, Andrew Luck. Andrew, Andrew Luck. Luck. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank right, you. So thank go, you. Right, so go ahead, Fish. That's all right. So I understand the temptation to hire a guy like Jeff Saturday. And I'm with you, Keith. It's not about Jeff Saturday. It's nothing to do with mm-hmm. him. You know, he seems like a great guy. You you know, like you say, you want him to do well. Um, but yeah, it just it just seemed like there was wasn't wasn't really any due process really at all. It just seemed mm-hmm. like out of nowhere. Fire the coach, and next thing you know, this guy was hired. Again, it's an interim coach, so I'm sure mm-hmm. there'll be a, I'm sure there'll be more formal interviews. Right. Hopefully, the, you know, the list of candidates is, is pretty extensive uh, uh, in the off season. So, I don't know. It's a tough one, man. So I get, like I said, get the temptation. What's 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 a way to combat it? I don't know. I think I think honestly, it just you have to it 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 has to come down to just like in a business, the hiring. Yeah. Managers, if well, you will. The, the the only way to combat this is we have to break this uh, good old boys club in ownership. We've got to get yeah. some minority ownership going. That's that's what right. I'm saying. And it doesn't mean that minority owners would be obligated to always hire minority coaches, but at least right. we would see more, and hopefully with success, other owners would see them having success and maybe give some opportunity. So, um. In it's a the only league that seems so backward. It's it's the it's yeah. the NFL is, is is so far behind. We talked so far about behind. The NBA. It's not even the biggest. The NBA has got over half right. the coaches. I think are, are NFL is three times bigger than the NBA, but it's so far behind. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I I agree with you on the strength in the vacuum. I get the Jeff Saturday hire. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know they do this in college. Bring back a former player. 
you know, somebody maybe understands the organization, a familiar face to help put butts in the seats or get right. the fans excited. I get all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? And and you're and you're just like hiring a celebrity coach almost, if you will. You know, so I, I get that part of the vacuum. It's just that the uh the timing is 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 bad and it's part of an ongoing thing. It's just part of a bigger picture. Yeah. Any thoughts, Skinner? I got nothing more to add to the subject. It's it's a shame, and you're absolutely right. The NFL is years behind the rest of the professional sports when it comes to this stuff, and yeah. they got to figure it out. Yeah, I mean, they, it's like in some areas they're progressive. We've got some female coaches, you know, maybe a couple of strength coaches or whatever, right? you mm-hmm. know, that's kind of progressive. we got some female referees. Yeah. You know? But when it comes to our, the actual team, it's just bad, man. Okay, guys, uh, real quick, this day in music. Um, it's funny, uh, 1992, Ozzy Osbourne announced his retirement from touring <laughs> after a gig in California and said, who wants to be touring hmm. at 46? I find that hysterical. Sharon's uh, like, get your ass back out there. <laughs> Stairs like, do you see these? <laughs> Just Botox. <laughs> it is not cheap. <laughs> it costs keep money. Wheel- she gonna yeah. keep wheeling him out there as long as he can breathe. He's gonna be. Do you think I get money from the view or whatever show she's on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, just for the sake of time, guys, I'm not going to go through all of these, but one that stood out for me on a uh, birthday this day, and he actually died three days ago in 2003, but he was born on this day in 1954, the great Tony Thompson of the band Chic. Of course, he really came to prominence playing drums for the super group, if you will, the one-time super group, the Power Station. Uh, a couple of members from um, Duran Duran, and of course yeah. uh, the great vocalist Robert Palmer. And so, I, guys, I was just thinking about who is, in your eyes, one of the greatest one-time super groups, or uh, a group that was made up of other people that you thought was great. Um, there's a couple that sticks in my mind. Um, the one group that I think this one of the most underrated albums uh, of all time, and that is um, really <laughs> I just lost them. But uh, it was comprised of Jimmy Page, uh, Led Zeppelin, and uh, oh, Page and uh, oh, shoot, no, no, uh, no, 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 Page and Plant. Uh, I mean, I just had it right there in my head. It just gets crazy. Coverdale uh, Page. No, 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 no. Uh, Hold on here. It's got to be right here. The Firm. Uh, I thought The Firm's album has a couple of my favorite songs of all time. Uh, mm-hmm. Live in Peace uh, is on there, uh, which I think has one of the greatest guitar solos ever on any song. Uh, but it had Jimmy Page uh, from Led Zeppelin, Paul Rogers from Bad Company, Tony Franklin on drums and Chris Slade on bass. Just an hmm. amazing, amazing album. Um, that might be my favorite uh, super group of, of all time. Uh, who do you got, Skinner? Um, I have two, actually. Mm-hmm. First one we talked about um, Audio Slave is one of them. With oh, Chris my Pernell, gosh. I can't believe I didn't bring them up. Definitely Tom number, my number one. Yeah. Uh, Tim Comerford was bass guitarist, mm-hmm. and Brad Wilk drummer. Audio Slave, I can't get enough of their music to be truthful. I didn't know you were they, a huge fan of them. I listen to them all the time. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one They're, of the greatest groups ever, yeah. And then the other one Great. that comes to mind that we talked about, and it's I think it was back in 2004, Slash joined up with uh, Miles and for Velvet Revolver. Yes, excellent. And, Before Valve, there was... Uh, uh, what's his name from um, Stone STP. Temple Pilots? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that band. I absolutely love Slash. I anything he does, he can play a song out of the phone book on his yeah. guitar, and I'm going to listen to right. him. The guy is just one of the most incredible artists in our lifetime. Um, I'll put him up there with the best of them. Uh, you guys but, re- yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. 
You know, so you guys remember a great group way back in the eighties, Derek and the Dominoes, the Eric Clapton. Oh yeah, group. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. Oh stuff, yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys about a group that I just discovered last week. I haven't stopped listening to them. I think I listen to them every day. It is some of the best music, the most unique music I've heard in a long time. And I thought I discovered a new band, and here they've been out for a while. Have you guys heard of Alter Bridge? Mm, Alter Bridge. I've heard the name. I've heard the name, but I couldn't tell you what they sing. Oh, I'm going to send you guys a link. Trust me, it is some of the best progressive hard rock heavy metal I have ever heard. Um, and they listen, they've been around. You're gonna know who these guys are. Okay, you mentioned Velvet Revolver with Miles Kennedy. Mm-hmm. Miles Kennedy is the lead singer. Really? Mm-hmm. Guess who the band is? Did You're you not say go- Alter Bridge? Alter Bridge. Oh, yes, I know who they are. Absolutely. Yeah. And the, I didn't the, understand who you were saying. I want to name the guys of the band, but you're not going to know their names, but you're going to know what band they're from. Uh, Mark Tremonti on guitar, Brian Marshall on bass guitar, and Scott Phillips on drum kit. You know who they are? Creed. Creed, yeah. I was trying to mm. figure out which one it was Alter Bridge or if it was Audio Slave. I couldn't they're remember. They're basically which one it was. Creed with a different singer, and I've never oh, heard anything like it. Alter mm. Bridge is fantastic. Phenomenal, man. So, Creed is I'm, one of those bands that, if it wasn't for their, their you know their lead losing his freaking mind, that band probably yeah. would be in the Hall of Fame already. Yeah. They were. And I hit you with one. Yeah, I agree. I hit you with one real quick for you, Fish. If you got that shirt on, there was a version of Wasp did one album, and that they were the best version ever, in my opinion. He had Johnny Rods on bass. Uh, Frankie Benelli mm-hmm. from Quiet Riot on drums. Yeah. Um, man, they did a version of the Who's. Uh, I don't need no doctor. Oh my gosh! No, Look no, circus. Is no, 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 circus no, 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 no. It was that. It wasn't that one. It was a couple albums later. Um, oh, okay. But they did a version of the Who's. Uh, the real me. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, man. man. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Fish? Uh, that, that that definitely was a good lineup of wasps. Yeah, sure. that was awesome. I remember like the 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 traveling Wilburys in the mm-hmm. late eighties. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a band that had it, it, most, if not all, are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You oh know, yeah, remember, I, mean, yeah. I mean, I know we know it from our generation. Tom Petty, mm-hmm. Jeff Lynne, mm-hmm. George Harrison, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and uh, Roy Orbison. I mean, jeez, yeah. yeah, I the know song, it was the, just right. The talent and the, the you know just the singing and writing talent from that group of guys is. How many hits did all those guys combine? Unbelievable, man! Oh man! So, and it was it was good music. It was yeah, decent. It, it was, was low, good. low key. It wasn't decent. my cup of tea at that time, but I appreciate it more now. Yeah, I right. never I forget which one it was, but they were talking about what it meant to be a Wilberry, uh, and everybody couldn't be in the Wilberries, and they were naming guys musicians that could be a traveling Wilberry. And I remember, <laughs> I think it was they said Prince, not a Wilberry. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> or somebody like that. It was great. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's been quite a few out there over the years. Uh, the skill of Johnson, Keith. Yeah, you better say it, I'm, baby. I'm Dylan was uh-huh. in that band too. For I can't for believe you said that because I just got a request for Silly Johnson Skeety today. <laughs> All right, that's a band of mine from way well, back. Then. That was a powerful CD. Group. Yeah, it's a really good really, I still yeah. have that CD. I think yeah. it was ahead of its time, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. So yeah, okay. So a lot of times, CD player, I still play it. <laughs> <laughs> so we get a lot of uh, uh, groups that get together, um, you know, one time and do a lot of incredible albums. I mean, you know, if you're in that sort of thing, there's a video out which that has Drake, who I can't stand, uh, Lil Wayne, um, Eminem. And forget who else is in it. And the song, the whole video is about LeBron James. It shows LeBron James as a child in Akron. Mm. And, and I tell you what, the song is just awesome. And, you know, they all do a good job with their verses, and the Eminem just comes in and smokes everybody, man. Oh, very interesting. Okay, guys, that's all I got for sports to music. Just get some pop culture fish. I'm a detective. Okay. You're on, Mr. Addison. When Dave helped a perfect stranger, he becomes a perfect gentleman. Guess you can't blow your nose on these babies, huh? 
They make a perfect couple. Take me, hold me, use me, abuse me. That's very nice, David. On Moonlighting. And when a dirty cop thinks he runs the streets. I'm going to be watching you, Officer Clayton. It's time to shake up the system. Easy, man. It's been through a rough night. It's going to get a lot rougher. Spencer for hire. Tuesday. Well, let me start out with uh, the Gen X uh, recommendations here, guys. So have you seen or heard or anything you want to recommend out there to our viewers and listeners? Skinner, have you watched or seen anything over the past week you want to recommend, sir? No, not this past week. We've been too damn busy to to pay attention, not alone try to watch some television. Okay. So I got nothing to contribute <laughs> this week, unfortunately. All right, Keith, I you mentioned you, you saw a movie in particular. Well, I was going to recommend something else. I have come across sure. the best medicine for syphilis. I mean, it is. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was no. just like, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fish is like, yeah, I know what you have to use it. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, Ryan Coogler. Hit it on the head, um, in my opinion, with uh, Wakanda forever. Hmm. I was just pleasantly pleased with this movie. Um, I've been really disappointed in Marvel. We've praised Marvel for so long, and I have been very disappointed with them. Um, Thor, Love and Thunder. Hmm. Um, uh, I, I, the, she the, uh, didn't like She-Hulk, that. yeah. Um, or, or, you know, just too much evil content, Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness, or some of the sexual content, not necessary. Um, but this movie almost checked every single box for me. There was one little thing, I won't get into all that, um, but far as unbelievable action, as far as great drama, and just a spice of humor, just in the... Um, mm. When uh, Umbaka, the Jabari leader, called Okoye a ball headed demon, I about spit up everywhere, man. But uh, it was brilliant. It was utterly. You say, How are you going to make the Black Panther without Chadwick Boseman? And it was absolutely brilliant. And they, they tributed him so wonderfully in this movie and honored him so spectacular. Uh, man, I, did, I couldn't get enough of this movie. I can't go wait to see it again. Um, the ending was done brilliant to further the series and i won't spoil mm -hmm. that for anybody but i just absolutely loved it i heard the submariner very good the submariner was incredible that guy who played him unbelievable performance man he was just mm. awesome um and uh angela bassett in my opinion should get an oscar nomination for her role mm. she was she was that powerful and that good huh. very good yeah yeah i'm definitely looking forward to seeing it yeah, you're gonna love it, man. You're gonna love it. Just killer. All right. Anything else? No, that's it for me, man. Okay. Um, well, not on the. I've been watching the the final season of The Walking Dead. Uh, it's coming down now. They have one episode left coming wow. up this Sunday. So it, but they're gonna branch off into. They already have different uh, series out there. There's two different Walking Dead series already. That's out there. Fear the Walking Dead and like Rise of the Walking Dead or something like that with younger people. Um, huh. So they're going to they're branch out. So it's like Daryl and so, so I think they're going to they'll be there. But that particular series that started it all is coming to to an end. So you know what? It's still a good series. I've been sticking with this thing. This is eleven seasons in now. A whole season is not a whole lot of episodes, mind you, but still, this this has been carrying on for a very long time, and I've enjoyed it uh, the entire ride. And it's a one thing that it's and even now with the finale, the biggest problem uh, is not necessarily zombies; it's other people. Just just like in the, it's just it's other people. That's interesting. You know, this, yeah, you said corruption. People trying to survive. Right. Oh, yeah. That would happen. It's still the it? same problems as it is today, if not even amplified, because it's a more of a lawless society. You're making your own rules in your own community and stuff like that. So, anyway, I, I, I I'm definitely enjoying this final season. I will, I will miss, I will miss it. Uh, but I'm interested to see what they do next. 
And uh, I caught an interesting documentary on Netflix. I mentioned this on the other show. Come and see it. Uh, Orgasm Incorporated. Here, guys. So okay, then you heard that was on yes. Netflix. It was on definitely on Netflix. <laughs> it's a story <laughs> of it's, it's a story of a company that was I think started on Google. On, but go ahead. <laughs> it started on the basis of orgasm meditation. So basically, it's uh, it's pretty much. What it is, instead of doing you know, traditional meditation, you are uh, uh, helping bring not sexual, not well, not you know, not having sex, but you're bringing women to orgasm. There's a whole thing around it. It's just very interesting. It goes off the rails into cult-like status. Yeah, uh, uh, and even goes so far as to make a church. An orgasm. It's a whole thing. Stop so, it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Huh. It's what, real. Years they, they interview- ago, 25 years ago, when I was a real uh-huh. smut, um, I used to couldn't wait to watch a show on HBO called Real Sex. Yes, that's and right. And one of the segments was about a, uh, I think it was an Asian fellow, older man, and that's what he did. He brought women <laughs> to full, and there was no touching at all to it. Hmm. Now this was touching, but okay. okay there was, this guy did never touch them. Hmm. It was uh, through breathing and air. It was craziest thing I ever saw. So, oh, now I, I have heard. Now, just it's just what I've been told that just simply listening to this podcast does have that effect on several people. You know, that's, I've heard that all. too. Yeah. So just uh, so if you're listening, Double continue to listen to the very to the very end. You know, no, but just if it's a very interesting documentary, it's an hour and a half. It's a quick watch. Just it's just fascinating how, you know, somebody starts something and they, they gain power and how quickly it screws up people's minds that are running something yeah. like this to where they just want. It's not enough. They want to do more. We got to do we got to do lessons. We got to do uh, certifications. We got to do. You're living in a compound with us. We're building a community now. Hmm. And then, like I said, you're building, you literally started to build their own religion. And it's like you see where some of this stuff can go sideways with uh, cult compounds. You know, David Correct. It's not that level, obviously, but it's a similar type of thing where people just gain a little bit of power. Yeah. And they just go nuts with it. and, And it just corrupts them. So does it just take a very much fascinating to get fucked to no. follow you, does it? No, it sure doesn't. Instead of the dude uh, ranch, do they call it the O ranch? <laughs> it was it was literally like church. Or, it was something like that. There was a guy again, his title was orgasm priest or something like that. And I'm like, uh, oh stop. That's, pre- that's pretty good. That's that's pretty good credentials. Stop. <laughs> that's that's pretty solid. Yeah, that's good that work card, if you can get it, huh? Put stop. that card in your wallet. You know, interesting, you. interesting. Uh, uh, do you work? Yes, yeah. I am the orgasmic priest. Uh, orgasm priest. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. How interesting. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to tell you about it here. Once. Uh, yeah. Come, right. Come back here in the. Uh, the yeah. No, but just it's again. Like I said it's there on Netflix. A quick watch. Fascinating. All right, uh, guys. We did have a couple losses uh, from our. Our generation or made impacts in our generation for sure. Uh, Leo Gallagher, of course, known as Gallagher, a comedian, uh, passed away last Friday, uh, age 76. So he was pretty huge in the world of comedy for several years in the 80s. I mean, in the late 70s, he started. uh, And through the 80s, he had a lot of specials on HBO very popular at the time, and of course, one thing that made him he, he gained notoriety for was his whole sledgematic right. Yeah, bit. I'd never forget that. <laughs> so he would bring out a a, a a big sledgehammer thing that he made with like wow. a stump or something like that, and he would smash produce and different things into the right. crowd, and he would always end it with a watermelon. It kind of became his trademark as a smash of watermelon. Yeah, I tell you what, if, if you go back and watch very early right. Gallagher, and the crowd is not at all prepared for this, he brings out the produce, and people are kind of sitting there like, "Yeah, he's not really going to do this. Oh, no, oh, yeah, he definitely did it. And he course, does you know, it. People, 
people soon got wise and uh, brought uh, the brought, ponchos. You know, ponchos and stuff. I saw him once live. I, I won tickets to this on the radio back in the late 90s at the Akron Civic Theater front row tickets. So I had the poncho and the whole bit, and you definitely needed the poncho for sure. So very interesting. And one thing I'll say, I used to watch his, spe- I watched all his specials back in the day. And the, the portion of the sledge matic was actually a very short portion of his act. It was only like the last maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes of his act where he would do solid comedy for well over an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he was actually a smart comic. He was not at the level of a George Carlin, mind you. I think George Carlin is probably the smartest comedian that ever lived, or one of them anyway. Uh, but he had some very good humor. Nothing filthy, nothing like that, but just he had a whole bit, for example, where he was trying to teach kids the English language. You know, he said, yeah, like C-O-M-B, comb, T-O-M-B, tome, no, tomb. And he kind of went ran all these words together to where it was spelled similarly, but pronounced differently. Because he had a lot of good bits like that. So if you've never checked him out, go back and watch some of his old... Uh, comedy bits, you know, the sledge a lot of fun, but like I said, definitely a smart uh, comedian. So I was definitely a fan. So, uh, Keith, were you a Gallagher fan, sir? What do you think about uh, him? Without question, the first time I discovered him on TV, um, it's funny you mentioned the intelligence. I thought, uh, I remember thinking, wow, this is my kind of guy, because I've always, even as a kid, I was kind of a thinker. And mm-hmm. I and everybody didn't get his humor. I remember my sister didn't get understand some of the stuff he was saying, and I was just loving it. Um, I never seen anybody with the with the sledge mat. It would beat the watermelons all over the crowd. You know, you had to have plastic. <laughs> everybody had that plastic. Yeah. On the first yep. two or three rows. So uh, I was a fan from the first time I met him. Um, as I got older, I kind of felt like I grew out of him. You mm-hmm. know, because the show was just so. I guess dated, but when I was younger, yeah, I loved Gallagher. I thought he was cool, but he was a character for the seventies and eighties for sure. The hair, oh, yeah. the mustache, you know, and he kind of had this New York at you know, way about him, you know, the way he carried himself, but I love the guy. Very good. Skinner, were you a Gallagher fan, sir? Absolutely. My dad introduced me to him back mm-hmm. years ago. He used to be on the HBO specials. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. George Carlin's probably the most intelligent comic to ever live. And I put Gallagher in, in the conversation with him. You know, like you said, he was known for smashing the the produce. But if you actually listen to the first three quarters of his act, he was really, really good. And um, I'd love to go back and revisit some of his old shows. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and I agree with all three of you about George Carlin, without question. I got a photo of with me and Peyton's mother with Gallagher at that special all those years really? ago somewhere wow. in a photo album he, and he was kind enough to take with it. He was an number one comedian for 15 years. He did 14 Showtime specials, by the way, and 3,500 live comedy shows. So def- definitely <laughs> quite the career. Wow, that's awesome. Another man had a very good career in the world of animation. Uh, passed away recently as well, uh, age 66. Poor man, also uh, was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, Kevin Conroy, you might know the name. You definitely know the voice. He was the voice of Batman on the animated series, paired up against Mark Hamill as the Joker many, many years from he was uh, the animated series, which ran from 92 to 96. But he was the voice of him in almost 60 different productions and also video games, including 15 films highlighted by uh, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. So I think in the Arkham Asylum games and everything. So if you know Batman's voice in the cartoons, it was probably, you know, once you got past the 70s and the old Super Friends and all that stuff, or that, that actor, I can't think of his name, but he was Batman and already youth. I could picture the voice of that guy. But Kevin Conway picked it up in the 90s, and he was Batman for many, many, many years. So uh, quite the loss in the world of, of animation. So he would definitely live on in the memories of uh, certainly our generation watching that in the 90s and uh, and beyond. So 
Keith, Kevin Conroy, and I'm in a Batman anime series fan, sir. Yeah, when you told me this one, man, this one really hit. Um, you know, years ago, all the, the uh, superhero animated movies, uh, <clears throat> there was different people that played these guys, you know, yep. uh, for a while. There, there was a different person almost all the time. And then the, the uh, Batman animated series came out, and there was a voice that was just so perfect for Batman. And then you heard that voice in the movies, and that's when I had to find out who is this guy, and that's when Kevin Conroy came on my radar. Of course, he's like he's popular now, but I'm talking mm -hmm. years ago. I had to look him up to find out who this was. And every time I saw a new movie came out, I was like, please let Conroy do the Batman voice. Anytime I heard Batman's voice, it was somebody else. It just was not, it wasn't right. And and I guess the fans felt that way too, because they got him for most of the Batmans the last few years. But I just thought he was the perfect pick for this character. It's like uh, Hugh Jackman playing uh, Wolverine. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, um, what's the name? He's playing Tony Stark. The perfect person for that role. His Robert voice Downey was, Jr. Yep. Yeah, Robert Downey mm -hmm. Jr. He just was awesome. So I'm really sad to hear about this one. Yeah. Skinner, what do you think? Kevin Conroy. I ain't got nothing I can add to it. He he did a couple uh, stints with Scooby-Doo, too, if I remember right. Um, Some off characters. But, yeah, no, he was, when you think of Batman animation, it, it, he was the guy that everybody knew. I don't know what else there is to say. I, I you know, I, I forgot that Mark Hamill was also in that being a Luke Skywalker trying to get away from that persona or that character, and he he did uh, some Batman. Uh, yeah, work, that was so. a great pivot for well, him. He was the Joker. He was the yeah. Joker, Joker for all those yeah. years. So it's, <laughs> right, yeah. right. So, but yeah, no, that yeah, Kevin Conroy, just an incredible, incredible voice, uh, brings back our childhood or our, our young adulthood and uh he certainly will be missed yeah i think yeah, one he, of the great go i'm sorry go ahead Mike. i was gonna say i just think one of the great reasons why he was such an awesome hire is a lot of time those of us who grew up reading comic books we get upset when either animated series or movies or real movies come out and they don't capture the essence of these heroes the true essence you know mm -hmm. and batman was a very brooding character very dark and broody, and Conroy's voice personified that perfectly. You know, he was just intense, wasn't a social guy. Uh, they showed that a lot in the Justice League cartoons, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't, he even said, I'm not a team player. He would leave meetings or, you know, refuse to join this or join that. And uh, he, he, they called him, hey, we're going to so-and-so. I'm busy. Click. You know, and Conroy's voice was great for that. Yeah, what I was going to say is he he didn't do like the Christian Bale version of Batman, where it was over the top, like purposely mm -hmm. gravelly and everything else. Mm -hmm. He was just a powerful voice. Yeah, you know what I, mean? it, I put it right up there with James Earl Jones and Darth Vader. Wow, that perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that perfect pretty pretty high, uh, pretty high on the scale. But I have yeah. to agree with you. Mm. I like that topic to expand upon in the future, by the way. Greatest voices to a character. We'll Great talk about that topic. later. Great topic, yeah. yeah. No, that's very good, though. Yeah, I agree with you. You can't picture it. it, it a generation, like I said, it, and beyond is going to know him as Batman and nobody else. Yeah. That's it. The vo right voice is so popular. You guys remember uh, uh, Battle of the Planets? Oh, yeah. My favorite cartoon of all time. I go on YouTube and pull up some of those, and the voices are different. I can't even watch it. By the way, I'll give you a, 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 an insight there. Just stumbled across it one day. If you like Battle of the Planets, there is a, a smart TV app for free, simply called G-Force. It's got the G-Force symbol. It's all the original Battle of the Planet episodes. That's, That's it. cool. They're on YouTube, that boy. Up. That's cool. I didn't know they were on YouTube, too. Yeah, but yeah every but last one of them. The, the, the app is there, too. Okay, well. Cool. Right. Thank you. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, another well-known actress from our generation um, has just announced that uh, she is not retiring, but she's not sure how much longer she'll be able to work. So Christina Applegate, uh, unfortunately, has multiple sclerosis. 
and uh, she is 50 years old. Presently, she's acting in the Dead to, Dead to Me comedy series, which I have not seen, but it's supposed to be quite good. You know, there's a lot yeah, of positive reviews about on that. this. I talked, talked about, about that last this. week, yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got Very two good. seasons out. It's actually really... It's a quick 27, 30-minute, 10-episode uh, season. Mm-hmm. It, it's... It's not the wow you type show, but it definitely keeps you interested. Me and Marcy watched them and enjoyed it. Okay. We're going to have to check it out. Uh, She did mention that there is a Married with Children animated version that's in development that she (laughs) would be voicing on with the original cast, apparently. So that'll be interesting if that does come about. But there's a very lovely picture of her getting a star on the Walk of Fame uh, this week. And uh, all the original, so now Ed O'Neill was not there, so I don't know, I didn't read as to why, but uh, all the other main cast members were there. Yeah, I David Faustino. Was he there? David Faustino, Katie oh. Seagal was there. Yeah, David Faustino, oh. and, and then the neighbor, the lady that played the yeah, neighbor. Yeah, the was neighbor, there I forget well. what her name is. That's the picture I saw was the. Yeah. Um, anyway, so just, I, I've been a fan of hers for a long time. She's definitely a good comedic actress. I thought she was terrific in the um, uh, Anchorman, the first movie with yeah. uh, Will Ferrell. They're paired up with him. Very, very good. I think that was one of her best comedic roles in that movie. So I don't know. It's just a shame. So I just, you know, we're, I know our thoughts go out to Christina Applegate. Hopefully she'll still be able to work as long as she, a little bit longer. I mean, certainly the disease may say no and, and not let her do so, but. I just thought it was kind of sad news and, you know, hoping the best for her. So um, any additional thoughts on her, Skinner? Any any work come to mind besides uh, some of the obvious that to me, Married with Children and all that? I just I think back to Married with Children. That was such a long-running show, um, and she was a big part of that. You know, she played that dumb, ditzy blonde. Yep. She did really well with it, but... You know, then she came out and did some older roles where she was. Um, the one I remember she was in was "Don't Tell Mama the Babysitter's Dead." That's right. Um, she did that while she was doing Mary with Children. It was a completely different type of role, so she was able to show how versatile she was. But uh, yeah, watching her with the the dead to me, she plays a mom. Um, it's not really too much of a comedic role, but she plays a mom, which is a different. You don't really see her doing that prior to now. So um, enjoyed her, enjoyed her her work. And um, back in the day, she was easy on the eyes, you know. Oh, yeah. I, I can't say that, uh, that but I can't say. That was her job. <laughs> that was her job. But bless her heart with this MS, or, you know, uh, because she's already fought and beat breast cancer. Now she's got this going on. So um, health-wise, she's, you know, she's taking it on the chin a little bit, but uh, I wish her well and uh, prayers to uh, extend a good health for her. Absolutely. Keith, anything else to add? I uh, just want to say um, definitely always been a fan of her. Uh, every movie I've seen her in, she was just awesome. Um, gosh, there's a movie she was in. I can't think of the name of it. Um, that she was just uh, phenomenal in. Uh and she wasn't even the main character. But yeah, I like her. But that story, um uh the situation you be I should about the sweetest thing, would you? With Cameron Diaz? No, 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 no. It's got uh the guys from um uh one of the guys what's his name from the office in it? Oh, uh, Corel? Yeah, not Corel. Uh Hall Pass. Hall pass. Yes. Hall pass. That's, That's right. She was in that. Hysterical. But anyway, mm. um, this story really hits home to me. Um, I'll never forget. Um, I was young. My sister had decided to move out. My youngest sister, who's a year older than me, Pam, you guys all know, uh, had decided to move to California with my older sister. She had been out there for a few years. And I get a call from my mom one day, just losing it. And Pam was at a, I want to say bus stop, and fell on the ground and couldn't move. 
and laid there for four hours. And all people did was walk over her. Some of them even spat on her. And man, I was, boy, I was angry. I was like, here, take my whole check if you need. I was, get my sister home. And we got her home and found out she was diagnosed with MS. And of course, she's been in a wheelchair ever since. Uh, my sister used to play football with us guys on the street. She had a nickname. They called her Sticks Downey because she couldn't be tackled. And it's been a, something heartbreaking for me to watch ever since. I know how it always broke my mom's heart. I can't imagine how my mom felt because I, when I see her struggling and, you know, it does something to me. So I, my prayers for Christina Applegate. Um, I saw her get her walk, walk of fame today. She like she has great spirit. And I just pray that she can recover, man. Uh, I still believe in a miracle for my sister. So, yeah. All right, man. Amen. Um, okay, Dave, uh, Dave Chappelle here, guys, making the news here again uh, recently. He, made, he hosted uh, SNL this past weekend. I don't know if you've seen the monologue yet, but definitely his monologue was a 15-minute monologue. Got a lot of buzz. <laughs> um and some people are saying that he it was uh that he was making anti-semitic commentary so uh it was definitely maybe i don't know on the borderline it was definitely comedy that's the thing though again it was comedy uh but a lot of people did not like it but he was a live appear. I mean, I, I tell you what, yeah, but you give you give it. He got up there. No one tried to get him off the stage. No one bleeped anything out. It was a live appearance, and he said everything he wanted to say. And uh, I don't know. I guess I could see somebody's perspective on the why they could think that he was uh, making anti-Semitic yeah. commentary. Oh, I don't crap. know. Yeah. I don't know. I I took it to more. It was more comedy. <laughs> Personally, uh, you know, fish. Um, I'm sick of this I crap, know, dude. Man. I'm, I yeah. don't want to hear that crap. I don't. I don't want to hear that crap. Anti-Semitic. Why is it everybody is ready to burn down a house if they think somebody said something towards Jewish people? That that's malarkey. I'm sick of it, man. Where was the outcry in all the the black jokes in, in all the years? Mm -hmm. Remember, remember when we were in, in junior high school and that book, Truly Tasteless Jokes, came out. The first volume. Oh, you know, I have some of those, yeah. I'll never forget. I was so ticked off because all the white kids were going around because they had all these hateful black jokes in it. You know, why do black people have white on the bottom of their hands and, and their feet? Because they were against the wall when God was spray painting them. Where, where was the outcry when all that stuff was out? Hmm. But you make one crack towards two people and everybody always oh, anti-Semitic. Man, I don't want to hear it. Listen, if you don't like something, don't listen to comedians if you easily offend it. Because you don't know what's going to come out of their mouth. It's called comedy. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be offended, don't watch comedians, man. It's just ridiculous. Now, if you're preaching hate, or, or, or that's different. Uh, Sinead O'Connor. She tore up a picture of the Pope and said, fight the real enemy. He got canceled. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's different. That's a different, whole different ball of wax. But Dave Com uh, Chappelle is a comedian. We talked about, uh, what's his name, being a, the most intelligent comedian. Um, I got Dave Chappelle at a number two. I yeah, think he's, he's just really, really intelligent, man. And you got to really get Chappelle. He ain't for everybody. You know, mm -hmm. so I, I, I'm just sick of all of this. You got the tip on eggshells when it comes to Jewish people. I don't give a crap who you are, Jewish, black or white or whatever. Joke's a joke. Why is it when it's against a, a, a black person, a fat person or whatever kind of person? It's a joke. But when it's against a Jewish person, it's anti-Semitic. I'm sick of that crap. That's just how I feel about it. Let's get away. I don't know that I can follow that one. Be truthful. <laughs> I, I agree with them. Why does it have to be anti-Semitic if it's it, it's comedy? Because it's dope. Yeah, he, if a comedian can't go up on stage and <clears throat> be funny, what else is there? When he makes the jokes against black people, where, where's everybody at up in roars about that? Yeah, he he was definitely he definitely said this is making the news right now. A lot of people, it's a very touchy subject. 
I'm going to go out and make fun of it. That's exactly what we did. That's I, I, it, everybody's that's all, yeah, I'm going to make fun of this right now. And that's it. Like he walked out. <laughs> he, just, <laughs> he says, I want to read a statement. You have to go back and watch it. It's, I mean, it's, 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 all, it's all over the place. You can find it on social media or the NBC app or whatever. whatever. But he's like, you know, basically, uh, I, I, don't st- I don't support anti you know, uh, Semitism. I'm, I'm with my Jewish brothers or something like that. And he folded up. He goes, and he goes, see, Kanye, that's, that's how you buy some time. <laughs> like you said, that's the power. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's him. Listen, yeah, I've said him. this before, and I'm going to say it again. For somebody didn't hear, if you really want to understand Chappelle, <laughs> one of the best moments in any of his specials was when he told yeah. that story about his transgender friend. Yeah. Yeah. And a horrible ending to that story. She jumped yeah. off a roof and committed suicide. And he mm-hmm. ended this deep, passionate story with, she lied to me. She claimed she was a woman, but clearly that was some straight up man blank that she did. Mm-hmm. And everybody was kind of stunned. He goes, she would have loved that joke. That's why she was my friend. That's yeah. Chappelle in a nutshell right there. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, if you're uh-huh. sensitive, why are you watching Dave Chappelle? Get a life. Well, yeah, and, and you know, and, and SNL brought him on there. Yeah, it's not like they, it's not like they're gonna, you know. Great. I'm sure they, they try to tell him what he Great can or point. can't say. He probably, he probably Great would say, nah, I'm not even gonna show up." Right? You can't not, tell I, Chappelle I, what to say, dude. Yeah, that's he ain't right. gonna be Chappelle. Yep. Yep. Okay, so they'll, but that'll it'll, it'll make the buzz for a little while yet. I'm sure, but I I, I doubt you're gonna hear Dave Chappelle apologize. There's I nothing doubt. to apologize about. I hope no, because I he, I, I, he'll lose a fan if he does. I hope yeah. he doesn't. I don't. I, don't, I, I won't watch him no more if he does, man. Somebody's got to make a stand. I'm sick of this stuff. Everything's anti-Semitic. Come on, man. Yep. I'm with you. All right, guys. Let's look at this, uh, the stuff that happened uh, so this week in uh, pop culture history. We're shooting this on Tuesday, November the 15th. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, let me scroll down here. Uh, all, uh, three years ago already, uh, three years ago today, the 15th, uh, the Joker opened in theaters. This was the uh, Joaquin Phoenix version of the mm-hmm. Joker. Uh, just a, a surprising, I, I did not really know what to expect when I went to go watch this movie. Uh, very pleasantly surprised. I thought Joaquin Phoenix was was terrific in this movie. Of course, he won an Oscar for this. So now, you know, the I don't know of many roles of any role in the movies. Period, where more than one actor won an Oscar for playing that role. Of course, Heath Ledger won a Best Supporting Actor after mm-hmm. he passed away for playing the Joker in The Dark Knight, and then Joaquin Phoenix played him in, in this movie. So. Just a whole different take on the Joker. Definitely more realistic. They never said it was the actual Joker, or the Batman Joker, but um, just, just a dirty, gritty, violent movie. It was a man suffering from a mental breakdown, clearly. I just thought it was very good, very well acted. And uh, I'll mention something here in a minute. But uh, what did you think of the Joker? Were you a fan of this, uh, the original, you know, not the original, but this uh, past Joker movie, Keith? I got to watch it again, Fish. Yeah. Didn't know what to expect, and I was a little bit, I guess, hoping for something more when I watched it. Now that I know what to expect, I want to watch it again, give it a, a fair shot instead of my expectations, kind of like the Batman movie, except it yeah. for what it is. Because, uh, you know, I wasn't that impressed at the moment. It wasn't bad. It was interesting. I just was expecting more Joker, yeah. you know, and we didn't get that. So uh, I want to watch it again and give it a fair shot. Yeah. Skinner, did you watch this movie or what did you think of you saw it? I thought he was fantastic. I did see it, and I agree mm-hmm. with Porter to a degree. We didn't get a lot of Joker. You know, in comparison to, uh, what was it, uh, Leto, we had too much Joker. Uh, yeah. and the one that he that that's he a good way of portrayed, it. and Horrible. of course, what's the name um, was perfect. Heath Ledger was he yeah. set yeah. the bar. Then, so, 
Uh, yeah, he set the bar so high that I don't think anybody will ever achieve it. But I think Phoenix did pretty damn good. Be truthful. But maybe Absolutely. we need to revisit the watch it. Maybe the three of us get together some night and uh, watch it together because I wouldn't sure. mind uh, seeing yeah. that again. Yeah, sure. You want There's some definitely interesting a reading? feel to it. Yeah. You want some interesting reading? Read about what Heath Ledger did to prepare for that role. Oh, hmm. God. It's a one he didn't lose his mind. Yeah. Yeah, what well, he did to prepare for that role was absolutely incredible. It was a factor of his death, right? I, yeah, I believe was, so, yeah, without question. I, I, I don't think it was coincidence. Let's just put it that way. Uh, by the way, they are making a Joker sequel yes. with, with Joaquin Phoenix, and this is the truth, and Lady Gaga It's going to be a musical that is not a joke. Yeah, I saw it. I saw that. Yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, huh. I don't... I don't get it, but let's see. Uh, that is in production now. Okay, uh, November 16th, all the way back in 2001 already, the first Harry Potter film debuted. Uh, it's six more, let's see, so seven books. You know what? Never saw the movie. Never saw them. And against them? It just the uh, 2001, you know, Peyton was a, a little baby. It just was something that just, you know, she, we saw uh, maybe one or two of the later ones, maybe. I half watched it. I didn't know what the heck was going on. But certainly it was a very successful, hugely successful book series and franchise. Heck, they have worlds of this in, was it Universal? I think, does it uh -huh. have a Harry Potter world down there or something yeah. like that? So hugely, hugely popular. Um, so like I guess it, not against it, just never really became a fan. I do need to sit back and go back and watch it. Everybody, I, you know, that I say I haven't seen it, that tells me I need to go back and watch it. So, Skinner, were you a Harry Potter fan? Are you still a Harry Potter fan or not so much? I'm a fan of the writer. Was it Jake, Jake K. Cowling? I think Jake K. Rowling. Jake, Jake K. Rowling. Rowling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She wrote the books, the drafts of the books, as a homeless person in her car. Wow. So she is the true meaning to rags to riches. Hmm. Now, I've, watched, I've watched the first two movies, but I haven't seen anything since then. Miss Marcy is a huge Harry Potter fan. You know, she knows all the movies, all the characters. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if she's read the books, but uh, my dad has read every bit of the books and has, he's seen all the movies. So mm -hmm. it's all around me, but I, I would. I'm with you on uh, maybe to spend some time and go back and watch them because I've only seen, I think, maybe one, maybe half of the second one, and that's all I've seen. Okay. Keith, Harry Potter fan? No. Uh, all right. Don't want anything to do with Harry Potter. Don't watch it. Don't care. <laughs> okay. All right. There you have it. That is also a similar review that we've received on the podcast by several people. <laughs> Where do you think I got yeah. it from? <laughs> You're really the same. Yeah. I just borrowed it. <laughs> Are you guys still doing this podcast? And then mm -hmm. the other one is the other one you just said, I think. Don't care. Not heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, November 18th, all the way back in 1928, is the birthday of Mickey Mouse. Um, yeah, obviously the you know hugely we all knew who Mickey Mouse is. So um I don't know. Not my favorite Disney character, but uh, it's I've always <laughs> had a my always had a place so for Mickey Mouse and all the classic Disney. I do like to go back and watch some of the classic animated uh, Christmas specials, like a, like Mickey's Christmas Carol. I watch that every holiday season, you know, the last few years. I you know, enjoy that thoroughly. So I don't know. Just a very Friendly, kind character, and it's obviously the trademark of Disney. Mickey Mouse is Disney as far as those animated characters are, are concerned. So I don't know. I don't know much more to say than that. Keith, Mickey Mouse, any, any thoughts on Mickey I'm Mouse? I'm so glad to hear you say that, uh, Fish. I know the franchise is built around him. Uh, he's probably my least favorite of of those characters. Uh, yeah. You know, just he's, you know, he's playing a Goofy and, and Donald and all those others. So... I think just found him annoying. I think it's a voice. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it it is. It's it's yeah. It's definitely an annoying voice. I give it that. Skinner, any thoughts on Mickey Mouse? Nope. Uh, he is the 
you know, he is the face of Disney, but uh, he's not my favorite character. Uh, I like the steamboat. Is it steamboat? Mickey? Steamboat, steamboat Willie. Willie. Steamboat Willie. Steamboat Willie. That's, I that's love where he going back and watching those old ones. But uh, Donald Duck, to me, has been my favorite since Classic. I was a little kid. Donald. Yeah. Um, to me, Donald is Disney, but um, that's I love just Stooge my... McDuck. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so. Yep. Okay. Well, happy birthday, Mickey. Yes, yeah. yes, indeed. Mixer, what's up? And, in 1963, also on November the 18th, um, the first push-button phones were first distributed for, to customers living in various places of Pennsylvania. Obviously, grew up from there. So, you know, uh, at least in my house, we had rotary phones. The old black rotary phone that weighed... 40 pounds you know we mm-hmm. had those phones my parents never replaced those rotary phones they had they did get a uh cordless push button phone but they never replaced the old rotary phone um but still there was something to those devices it's just the idea of using those devices I, you know, again, it was, it's just a long, the people still have them, I'm sure, in their homes, even to this day, you know. But just maybe kind of reflect on those old phones and some of that older technology that we had that is now either obsolete completely or maybe you still have some of it just because you never either got rid of it or maybe it's at a family's house or something like that. So I don't know. So does anything come to mind when I say that as far as the push button phones? So, you know, is that a phone that you I mean? Is the cell phones today? Are you are we missing something from using the old phones like that? Or, and or is there other older technology that you kind of miss or maybe still have? Or nope, I don't care about any of that. It's all in the past, and I like the new technology. And you're crazy even thinking that any of that is missed. So, Keith, do you have anything that comes to mind as far as the older technology? Well, yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to say it's so funny. We talked about Mickey Mouse a minute ago. Now you're talking about old phones. We have a Mickey Mouse rotary phone in the basement. There so, you go. I remember those. All right. Yes. yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, real quick, I want to say all this. Uh, I remember years ago when I was a boy and our neighbor brought something over. He wanted to show my mom and give it to her. And he brought it in this big thing and he set it up on the counter. And we were all like, what is this? You know, it's a microwave. We all went, what's a microwave? And he was trying to explain it, and I just couldn't get it. Like, hmm? And he was all excited about how fast he cooked things. And I thought, wow, here's something new. My mom never heard of before. Technology's changing. I never thought that I would see something like that in our generation. But they did a video, and they put a bunch of kids in a room with rotary phones. They didn't know what to do. That's right, sure. I never thought I'd live to see that. So, oh yeah, just amazing. So to answer your question, um, you know what I think about uh fish, um, uh, as, as if you don't know, those of you listening, I, I am a, a minister, a pastor. Um, I preach from my iPad, mm-hmm. and sometimes I have to say, you know what, I want to get my Bible. I like, I miss turning pages. And the print and the holding of a book in your hands, you know, protecting my Bible. Um, I think we've gotten so digital, and I think the the lights are damaging our eyes. If you don't have a blue light, especially in the dark, and I think that technology is being missed. Books. I hope we don't ever let books get away from us, man. So that's one thing mm-hmm. that I think about. Very good, Skinner. Any thoughts of any of this older technology versus my new? grandmother? Yeah. Lived on 4th Street in Kenmore, um, Mm -hmm. right there in front of the bridge and the fire station. And her rotary phone that you said in the handle itself weighed like 15 freaking pounds. (laughs) You had to use two hands to pull this thing up off. Uh (laughs) It was hardwired into the phone line. You know, most of the, the, Mm -hmm. the modern day phones. You had a phone cord that you plugged into the jack in the wall, and then it plugged mm-hmm. into the bottom of the phone. Not my grandmother's. It was hardwired into the system, into the house. Mm-hmm. So that I remember. Um, I miss my favorite cell phone to, to this day still 
I'm, I've got the new iPhone 14 Pro. It's a pretty phenomenal phone for Show today's off. technology. Shut up. But I miss the old Motorola Razors. That to me, that, to that's this old day, technology to him. <laughs> is yeah, it's old technology as far as cell phone. That was my you first cell phone. I miss the first generation iPads. I... <laughs> Hell, uh, but, but I went through three of those phones oh, because the quality, oh, oh, the yeah. the durability of those phones was terrible. But mm -hmm. the fact that you could stick it in your pocket and didn't know it was in there, I I missed that about oh, those the phones. good old days. Yes, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, those phones. It's it, it when those phones kind of fit. It's it's like a that was the beginning of I guess it's at the beginning of the end. But you know, obviously, when, when we all grew up, you know, if you wanted to talk to somebody, you had to talk to somebody. There was yeah. no texting or anything of the kind. You had to pick up a phone. Thank you. And call Dollar somebody. Mm -hmm. Or you had to go over there and talk to people or whatever oh, and it was. If, and, and if you yeah. had a girlfriend and you were a teenager, I mean, I, I remember talking to Janine Edders from like 7 o'clock in the evening till it was time yeah. to go to school. Yeah. I'll see you at school. Right. <laughs> you know, just love talking. Now yeah. I can't stand being on the phone too long. Yeah, it, it, it's strange how that changed. Yeah, and then you're just playing with the phone cord, at which... I, re I remember the music over the phone. virtual reality yeah. goggles that were out last year. I miss those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah, that's so 2019. Uh, uh, yeah, twenty one. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So I, I, honestly, a lot of the technology that's advanced is is perfectly fine. I do have like, my old video game. Yeah, systems. I'm a tech guy. You know, I'm cool Once in a tech. while, I'll, I like to go back and play some of the old retro games, and the retro games are still as popular very popular to to this day new with younger people that go back and like to play the old 8-bit looking games and stuff like that and yeah. one thing that fascinates me is the is the music it's just the 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 huge resurgence of vinyl where people are buying turntables mm -hmm. and playing vinyl I'm and the young, a lot up. of younger people like that so i'm like to me it's it, it we advanced past vinyl when we got to Okay. All right. Hold yeah, on. CDs, but right, there's probably I, something. I but I, there's something tells me though too. I have, I have a turntable in the attic. I got into argument with my boss. Uh, I ahead, used to work please. at Quonset Hut, which was a record store here oh, in yeah. Accra. My and my boss got into this argument because he had had this argument with other people, and he asked me, and he was shocked about my answer. He couldn't understand why anybody would rather listen to certain records on vinyl as opposed to the clarity of a CD. Mm -hmm. And I got it. One of the first albums that I heard on vinyl in a long time, you know, when I was older, that I love, I heard Black Sabbath Mob Rules. Mm -hmm. And when a country girl would come on to hear that scratching on the vinyl, that the noise it make, I don't know. There was something about the warmth of vinyl. You know, sometimes it's a CD can be so sterile, it misses something, in my opinion. You know, especially hmm. if it's older music. You know, today's music, of course, is made for that. It's recorded like that. But older music, it's just something about hearing it on that vinyl and hearing them scratches. It's like this whole human element, and I think it sounds great. So I get it. Okay. Skinner, what do you think? Vinyl. I love. I still love vinyl. I wish uh, I wouldn't have gotten rid of all the records I did years and years ago. They never expected it to come back, so why would I keep them? But I, I had a, I had a lot of records, a lot of forty fives uh, that I would go and buy. Just you know, if I liked the single and didn't want the whole album, I'd go and buy the forty five. You know, hmm. you side A and you side B. Uh, and, but um, yeah, I never expected vinyl to come back the way it is now, and I miss it. I do miss it, just like Keith's saying. There's something about it different than what you listen to today good stuff great episode about that on uh everybody loves raymond when he tried to replace his dad's jazz records his dad just didn't want to hear him and the other brother comes in and has found him on vinyl at yard sales and he's like ah that's music <laughs> it was a great episode on that so it's very good
Yeah, I'll just say with the games too, real quick. It's just you know the 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 old video games. You play an old video game. It's it's going to end. That's it. You're, you're going to last so long. So only so far you can go. Eventually, the asteroids or something is going to blow you up, and that's it. It's not a hour upon hour epic to solve a game. So some of those games are just the. It's a nice breath of fresh air once in a while to go back and play some of those old classic games like that to where you can play a game in 10, 15 minutes and it's an enjoyable experience. You try to beat a high score and that's mm-hmm. it. So I don't know. All right, guys, there's plenty more we could talk about here, but uh, a lot of good topics today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, before we get another uh a poor review, like Keith uh, shared with us earlier. Why don't we uh, wrap it up here? So, any announcements, Keith, before we wrap up? Uh, yeah, real quick. Um, on December 4th at the uh, Lincoln Theater, uh, downtown Maslin, um, I will be performing uh, with the uh, Spotlight Entertainment. It is a solid gold Christmas. Uh, featuring songs from the Carpenters, Perry Como, Johnny Mathis, Judy Garland, Ernie Williams, Elvis, and many, many more. Wow. So it'll be a great Classic. show. Yeah, uh, tickets of uh, VIP are thirty dollars. Um, and the main floors are twenty five dollars. Balcony twenty dollars. Wheelchair twenty dollars. So that's on December fourth. Uh, curtains at four p.m. And I'm thinking, I hope I didn't miss rehearsal because I just realized this. So <laughs> I hope it's a good show. <laughs> but also, I would be remiss if I did not say today. Uh, you know, you're hearing this show next week, but we're recording on November fifteenth, and it is National Drummer Day. So, hey. Hey, all you drummers out there, you all are inspiring to me. Very good. I just remind everybody you can hear me on my other podcast, Convincing Idiots, with uh, Dean and Nick, pop culture topics and nerdy debates and all that good stuff. So you can find us out there on podcast, also the Bosco Media Network and YouTube. Skinner, any announcements before we wrap up, sir? Then take it away to your uh, outro whenever you're ready, sir. Nope, just a busy couple weeks coming up. Uh, Good, you, you think? Know, at daughter here, uh, going to deliver hopefully on Thursday now. Uh, didn't happen today. Uh, my son getting married on the 3rd of December, mm. which are right around the corner. We've been planning this for six months, and now we're two weeks, uh, just shy of two weeks out. So we're busy here the next couple weeks, but uh, just keep my daughter in prayers as she gets through the next couple of days uh safe travels for myself I'm going to pick up my son-in-law uh down in florida this weekend so three-day trip down to florida and back uh this this old man's not gonna do very well uh with that quick turnaround but uh glad to see uh, the son coming home so yeah that's with great. that being said uh Another great show, uh, gentlemen. Appreciate your candor. Appreciate your honesty. Appreciate your jokes. Um, don't appreciate the black and gold that you keep bringing on the show, but that's beside the point. So for Brian Fisher and <laughs> the Steeler lover, Keith Porter, I am Michael Skinner. We're the guys from Gen X. We appreciate you as always, and we will see you next week. Take care, folks. Jerks didn't even congratulate me on my Steelers win. What a bunch of selfish jerks. Keith Porter here, aka Porter House, from It Came From Gen X. We hope you've been enjoying the show, but please make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.
Hey everybody, this is Keith here with the Came From Gen X. Coming up on the show, Tragedy Strikes the Air Show. Also, the voice of Batman, Silence. And... Insert your own topic here, folks. Looking right at... 